Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on Docker file tutorial at Plilearn. In this video, we are going to dive into the basics of Docker file, which are the backbone of creating Docker images. If you are new to Docker or want to streamline your container setup, then this tutorial will walk you through everything you need to know to get started. We will start by understanding what a Docker file is and why it is important. And then we will go step by step through writing a basic Docker file. By the end of this video, you will be able to create your own Docker file. Just a quick info guys, Simply Learn has got a postgraduate program in DevOps in collaboration with Caltech and IBM. You can become certified DevOps professional with this latest program in DevOps course. You can streamline development by documenting processes, creating self-explanatory systems, and also delivering applications faster than traditional software development processes. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So guys, you will be wondering what is a Docker file. So let me show you a sample Docker file. So you can see something I have written all over here and these are all text basically. So Docker file is actually a text file that contains instructions to build a Docker image. Now, if you are wondering what is a Docker image, then you should go back to the previous video on our channel to learn about Docker. So the prerequisite for this is that you should know the basics about Docker, like what is container, what is a Docker image, and then you can proceed towards this video. Now, as I was saying that Docker file is a text file which contains instruction to build a Docker image. So here you can see I have written certain instruction. For example, you can see I'm using Ubuntu's latest image. Then I'm setting the working directory of that image. Then I'm copying all the files from the host system to the image file system. Then I'm also installing the necessary packages. I'm setting up the environment variable and finally running a command to start the application. So these are the set of the instructions which I want my application to perform automatically whenever I am building an application. So for the same purpose, Docker file is written. And the Docker images, as you can see all over here, are the blueprints for the Docker containers, which allows you to define everything your application needs to run. From operating systems to application code, libraries and dependencies. And once you build your own Docker image, you can run your application consistently on any system that supports Docker. So that's the beauty of Docker. Now we'll move ahead and to understand some of the most important Docker commands. Now before we dive into an example, let us understand some of the key Docker file commands that we frequently use. So our first one is from. So if I talk about from, it basically specifies the base image. Now, work dir, okay. So our first command is from. From basically specifies the base image for the Docker image. For example, I have written a syntax from node 80. So it specifies that we are using the node 18 base image on our Docker image. Every Docker file must start with a from command. This command is very, very essential because it sets up the environment your application will run. So here, node 18 provides a node.js runtime environment. So that's why we use from. Now, next is workdir. So it basically sets up the working directory inside the container. Workdir defines a directory where the subsequent commands will be executed. If the directory does not exist, then Docker will create this directory. Next is copy. So copy command copies files from your local machines to the container. So here you can see I have written copy dot slash app. This command copies files and directories from your host means from your local machine into the container file system. It often used to copy the source code dependencies or configurations which is required by your application. Next command that we have all over here is run command. Run command, as you can see, it is evident that it runs a command in the container during the image building process. So here I have written run npm install. The run commands 
executes the command in the container at build time. It's commonly used for installing dependencies or setting up environment configurations. Next we have CMD. Now if we talk about CMD, CMD specifies the default command to execute when the containers start. Suppose we have CMD node app.js. So unlike run, which is executed while building the image, CMD is executed when a container starts. It's often used to start your application, such as by running a server or an executable file. Then we have expose and we have written expose 3000. Now, expose command informs Docker that the container will listen on a specific network port or at runtime. So suppose I'm exposing the port 3000. So expose is used basically for documentation purposes and it doesn't actually publish the port. To publish the port, you need to use dash p, okay? So if you want to publish it, so you can use uh, hyphen p and uh, when running the container. However, expose helps also others developers to understand when a container is expected to use. Next one that we have all over here is env. It basically sets up the environment variable inside the container. So you can see a command that I have written all over here, env node env equals to production. Now this command allows you to define the environment variable. It is pretty evident. And these variables can be used in the container for configurations to avoid hard coding values in your code. Next one we have all over here is arc. It basically defines the build time variables. Suppose I have written arg version 1.0.0. Arg is similar to env but works only during the build stages. It allows you to pass variables into the docker file. For example, I could write something like this. Say docker build and then I can write build arg and here I could use the version say Instead of 1.0, I could use version 2.0. So, it overrides the default version that we are using. So, it basically defines the build time variables. I hope so, you have got a brief idea regarding this. Next one we have all over here is entry point. Now, this command defines the command that always runs in the container. For example, I have written entry point node app.js. So, you can see it is similar to like CMD command, but it has a higher priority. It allows you to configure a container to run as an executable. For example, if you set entry point to node all over here, then whatever you pass in CMD or when running a container, say I could run something like this. For example, say docker run and my container app.js. So this will always append to it, okay? So that's the beauty of this is. Now, always remember entry point has a higher priority than CMD. Now, similarly, we have the next command, which is user. And you can see something I've written, user node. So let me explain you. It basically sets the user to run the commands, such as user node. So by default, Docker container runs as root, which can be security risk. The user command allows you to specify a different user to reduce the potential vulnerabilities. So that's why we use this. Next one we have on build. Now it adds a trigger instruction to an image that will execute when the image is used as a base image for another build. Okay. For example, I've written on build run npm install. So here what we are doing it is automatically going to run when another docker file inherits from this, okay? So it is useful for those images who are intended to be used as a base image. Suppose if you have a base image, again, for example, like Node.js, okay? So for Node.js project, you can just build like on build run npm install. So it is basically inheriting from that. So docker file inherits from it and it will automatically run Okay, when under Docker file, you know, you are inheriting from the same. So for that purpose, we use on build. Next one, we have label. Now, if you talk about label, it adds a metadata to the image. For example, I have written label 
maintaineruexample.com. So it is providing a metadata about the image such as maintainer's contact information or you can also add the versioning details. Next we have stop signal. It specifies the system call signal that will be sent to the container to the exit. This command is going to define the system call which is signal sent to stop the container. So basically docker uses sig term but you can override with this stop signal. Now next we have the health check. Uh, it is also a very important command. So it checks if the application container is running as expected or not. So you can see all over here, suppose I have written health check interval 30 seconds, timeout 10 seconds, read fries in 3, then CMD and I have given curl F and then some certain link. Okay. Now health check allows you to define test to check if your application is healthy or not. Okay. So if the check health fails, the container is marked as unhealthy, which can be used in container orchestration platforms like Kubernetes. So you can use these commands to basically check the health of your containers. Now some of these are very basic commands and most of them are used in iteration whenever we create a docker file. Now let us create a docker file and try to run our application. Now you can see all over here, in this demo, I have navigated to examples folder, okay. Then I have navigated to my folder which contains these two files. In the app.py I have just written print hello world. Let us write something very basic and I want to build my docker image based on this. Okay. Now for the same purpose I have written a docker file. Now what I have written in the docker file guys. Okay. So first as I have told you. So I am setting up the base image okay, which is the latest Ubuntu version. Then I am setting the working directory of this given image in which will be in the slash app. I am copying all the files from the host file to the image file system okay which we have kind of, uh, created on the docker okay so our python hello world will be copied okay into the slash app folder then i'm installing all the necessary dependencies and for the same purpose first i'm updating okay because whenever you are installing anything on ubuntu you first update it with the apt get update command and then i'm installing python 3 and python 3 pip finally i'm setting my environment variable, okay, name world, and I'm finally running a command to start python3 app.py. Now, in the next step, what we are going to do guys, we are going to build the docker image. So what I will type on my terminal, docker build t python hello say world. And I'm going to add a dot after this. Now the T Python hello world names the image. Okay. And the dot tells the Docker to use a Docker file in the current directory. Now let's enter it. So you can see all over here that our Docker daemon is not running. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to go to my Docker desktop. So you can see all over here that my Docker engine is about to start. Now when this is started, you can type the command and it's going to work. So always make sure to start your docker engine before you type any docker commands. So you can see our docker engine has started and now let us type this command. The same command and, and you can see all over here it has started building our docker image. So you can see it is reading this command from Ubuntu latest. So it is actually downloading all the latest image of Ubuntu. Then it is setting up the working directory, okay. Then it is copying all the files from the host file to the image file. And then it is installing all the necessary dependencies which is basically required to install Python. So the version I'm using all over here is Python 3. Now you can see all over here the packages of Python 3 has started to download. I will zoom a little bit. Now you can see all over here that our docker image is built and in order to view this it has also given us okay so you can just use this as a default view and you can see your image so let me try to click on this so you can see all over here guys that I have opened 
the details of our container which we have built all over here okay so it is first docker file and here you can see all these you know details have been given the real time the accumulated time the cache use a lot of other things are also given so guys as you can see all over here i have typed docker images and i could see that python hello world image is present and the tag is latest and you can see it was created four minutes ago so now let us try to run our application now we are going to type docker run and we are going to copy this let's copy this repository python hello world okay so you can see all over here i have written the command docker run python hello world latest because our tag is latest all over here okay now it is just the same okay so you can see it's not world it's world is there okay so okay so we have done some mistake now we have rectified it now let's try to run this okay so you can see all over here that we are getting hello world printed all over here so it was a very basic sample application and in which i have told you like how you can use a docker file to build much more complex application or even if you are building your own microservice you can use docker file to you know set up your own environment and you could just for automation purposes for configuration purposes you could use this i hope so guys you would have got a brief idea regarding docker file and would have enjoyed today's video thank you guys for watching this video staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career we've got you covered Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.